Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic. We're going to be talking about open VDV, which is explosions, smoke, uh, simulations and all that sort of stuff. And the reason why we're going to do this is because I want to show you how to render smoke. This one right here. Now we're not actually going to be doing the smoke. I'm just going to show you how to render the smoke. And this technique that I'm going to be sharing with you is going to be really, really cool, especially if you want to integrate this sort of stuff, like very realistic volumetrics in your steel renders. You can actually render animations if you can get an, a VDV uh, like a cache with, um, what's the word? with like simulation and actual like frames, but just for static stuff is really, really, really cool. And it's going to give you a really nice result. One thing I'm going to warn you about is it's really, really heavy. You can see right here that it's taking quite a bit of time to render just this very, very single frame that I'm going to be doing with a no face right here. You can use a GPU, which is quite nice. You can use the noiser, um, which is also quite nice. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about this. Now, before we jump, I just want to remind you that we have a lot of stuff covering uh, this particular topics, which is uh, simulations with our Houdini course. And you can get the Houdini course today, I believe is the last day of the code. You can get the Houdini course with a huge discount in Udemy. Hey guys, I'm here with a great deal for all of you. For the next five days, we're gonna be offering a 90% discount in all of our Udemy courses. 90% guys, this is the lowest we can go for our discounts and you are going to be learning from industry veterans and experts all of the workflows, techniques, tips and tricks that you want to become a great 3D artist. We have modeling, we have rigging, we have animation, we have sculpting, we have characters, environment, creatures, a little bit of everything. You can get a 90% discount for the next five days if you follow the link down here. All of the courses are recorded in real time, so you're not gonna miss any part of the process. They include the project files. We have a support line for questions. You can ask questions on the site and we'll be getting back to you as soon as we can. And uh, yeah, we are also offering a free 30 day money back policy. So if you buy the course and you don't like it, I don't think it's gonna happen. If you don't like it for any reason, you get your money back within 30 days of your purchase. No questions asked you get your money back. So if you want to learn any 3D skill and you want to start this year strong with really good skills, really good fundamentals, make sure to check the link down here. Hurry up. Remember, this offer is only going to be available for five days. So join us and become an amazing 3D artist in no time. There we go. So remember, even though the little video says five days, today should be the last day. Uh, it should be February 23. Okay, so make sure you make a use of that code because we're not going to have the sale in a little while. So uh, as you can see, uh, these are some free BDV packages that we can download. So what is VDV? Well, as uh, you guys know, in the industry, there are often like a steps that the studios take to make sure that they can share things between each other. That's why we have FBXs, uh, with the film box stuff. That's why we have, of course, OBJ, STL, like different formats of files that we can use to transport one thing from one point to another. Well, uh, uh, BDVs is one type of, um, what's the word? One type of specific format that we can use for um simulations okay so as you guys know in the in movies in the commercials and stuff we're gonna have simulations of fire smoke water and things like that and uh, you can generate the simulations in a bunch of different uh, like softwares some of them for instance here it says that it's been done in embergen uh you can do this in blender you can do this in maya with bifrost you can do this in houdini you can do this in the 3d studio max like there's a lot of softwares out there that can create this sort of elements and what happens happens here is they're actually working with this thing called voxels. So by, by generating and simulating how these voxels like behave and move around, we're able to create this amazing looking explosions. I'm going to be perfectly honest. This is not one of the parts that I'm like proficient at. BFX has always escaped my uh, particular uh, like uh, learning curve. I I've never really gotten into it, but that doesn't mean that we can't use some of these tools to create something really cool for our own scenes. So I downloaded this one right here, this Dust Devil Tornado, and I'm going to show you real quick how to get it from this uh, cache right here which as you can see it's a 422 megabytes cache is quite big some of them are even bigger 2.8 gigabytes 751 megabytes uh so how do we get this from uh, from the cache which is just a series of files into maya 
Okay, so the way this works, we're going to be using Arnold and here inside of Arnold, you can go to this option called volume. You click this volume option and you're going to create an AI volume. And if we go to the property editors of the AI volume, we're going to be able to link this AI volume to a specific cache. The great advantage of BDVs and uh, all of the different caches is that instead of having to recalculate the simulation, the simulation has already been calculated. Okay, so, so you run your test, you add your wind and your turbulence and all that stuff stuff. And once you're happy with the simulation, you save it as a cache. So every time you need to reference that cache and render it out, you just need to uh, go and load it from the file. Okay. Now, when we load this, you're going to see that it's asking us for two grids, the density grid of here and the velocity grid over here. This particular one only has one grid assigned to it. When you export from other software, such as Blender or even from Bifrost, you can decide how many grids you want to export. The more grids you export, the bigger the file is going to be, but the more information you're going to be able to get from it. So for instance, if we were to download one of these explosion ones, as you can see, it's a little bit heavier. Why? Because not only are we getting like the density of the element, we're also getting the temperature of the smoke we're getting the the i don't know like the dispersion and stuff so so by using all of those other channels we're going to be able to render this as a as a fiery explosion this one as you can see right here is just a smoke we're just going to get a very nice and interesting density so we need to load this bdb right here and then here in the grid density you need to click it this is one of the things that I was messing around um, a couple of hours ago. When you load this, you're going to get the option here. You need to click it to select it so that it knows that you're gathering information from that particular channel. Same for the velocity grid over here. You need to click it or click whatever like uh, volume channels you have here or, or um, just like grids you have over here. If this is a, an animation, you can use this thing called the use file sequence. If it's not an animation, you can close this and just select a manual, um, like a specific frame. I am going to be using the sequence just so that you can see. And uh, that's it. Like with this, we're pretty much done with the connection of the elements. Now, if we scroll, you're going to see by selecting, if you don't select anything, you might not see the volume. But if you select the volume here and we scroll, you can see how the volume changes in size. And the reason why it changes in size is because the, the smoke is like becoming bigger or just like floating and moving around. So I'm going to find a frame, let's say frame 40, for instance, and I need to assign a, a AI standard volume to this box so that it renders as a volume, as a smoke. However, it's really like tricky because you can't actually assign it from here. Like if I say assign new material and I go to Arnold and I try to look for the AI volume, it's not going to be here. Why? I don't know, but what we need to do is we need to do, go to the hypershade and here we need to press tab and write AI volume, okay, or AI standard and you're going to have here the AI standard volume. Once you create this AI standard volume, you're going to select it. I have mine right here, uh, this, one. this one right here. So you're going to select it and with this thing selected, or actually you don't even need to select it, just select the box now right click and you can go to assign existing material and all the way down here you're gonna have the volume <laughs> sorry the volumes so you got the particle cloud and the ai standard volume one so we assign the ai standard volume one again you're not going to be able to get to the attributes over here you're going to have to go to the hyper shade and once we go here as you can see we're going to get this so here on the volume option which is like the main smoke that we want to see by default, it should be taking the information that you're looking for the density channel. If it's not, you can actually like tell it what channel you're getting the information from so that it gets you the volume. I moved mine to a density of 0.3 to make it a little bit thinner because I don't want this to be like a super thick and uh, an intense smoke, but we might be able to change it around. Now, let me show you real quick here on the rendering thing. There we go. You can see here, this is a, a double dust. This is the base of the double dust. And if I render, this is what we get. So it looks really, really cool. It's an actual volume. It's it's refracting and uh, and modifying light from like everywhere. So that's why it takes so long to process. Again, we can use the noiser. I'm gonna stop this right here, and we can actually use the noiser. Like that's the denoiser right there, and it does a pretty decent job of of cleaning this up. And um, not only that, but we can actually uh, play around with the parameters here. So if, for instance, I go really low on the density to like a 0.1, and we render. This smoke is going to be really, really thin, as you can see right here. It goes into this sort of like wispy, wispy smoke on the top because the density on the top is not as big. And then if we do the opposite, if we go to a density of one, for instance, which is really high, 
everything's going to be really, really, really thick, like a plume of, mo- of smoke. Uh, I believe it, it initially it is supposed to be this uh, thick from the original VDV file that we got. It should look a little bit like this, but it's a little bit too much, as you can see right here. Now, I did change the color. Over here, we have the scatter, and we can change the color of the object. As you can see, I made it a little bit darker because no face is supposed to be like a dark cloud. But you can go really light as well. And the smoke is going to be very light. You can see how nice. Look at that. That looks really nice. Look at how it's reacting to the to the spotlights and the lights that we have right here. I think this is one of the reasons why it's taking so long because I have so many lights on this scene. I have like seven or eight lights. Um, but look at how cool the details look. Look at the density right there. Uh, if you want, of course, you can change this to a different color. Like it could be like a like a red, like a dark red color or something. And look at that. Super, super, super cool. It is. It is. Uh, it is taking quite a bit of time. This is uh, something that I really want to be uh, clear about. I, I have a, a quite a powerful system. Uh, it's not one of like the top end, but it's quite powerful, and it's still taking me quite a long time to to render something that looks uh, usable. Okay. So this is how you can very quickly set up something like this. If you are using something with explosions or if you're using an explosion down here on the emission as you can see it's looking for the heat channel and it's working as a black body so if i have a bdv i don't right now but if i have a bdb that has heat information this emission would make the heat parts like like fire it's going to look like an explosion it's going to look really 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 cool so i invite you to to check it out if you want to you can of course change the black body kelvin which is how how hot or how the cold uh, the the light is going to be and uh, this is again with the temperature so uh that's what we need to do to set this up right like that's that's pretty much all we need to do I'm now going to show you how we can bring this into our scene because I, I really like this sort of result right now of course not the color let's go let's go for a sort of like grayish color something like this there we go because I, I really want to see something like that and then on the density let's go to like a 0.6 density so what I rec what I would recommend if you're going to be integrating this into a scene like what we're about to do is it don't um don't try to do this on the actual scene because it's going to be a little bit difficult at first. So try to get something that looks close to what you want on an alternate scene like this one right here like a test scene and then we're going to bring this in into the Japanese tunnel so that we can tweak it based on that. Because if we try to render on the Japanese tunnel due to all of the geometry and, and textures that we have, the rendering time will be even bigger, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna close all of this. I'm actually gonna do one thing here very in, uh, very quickly. I'm gonna change the name of this standard fog volume. I'm gonna call this M fog, And I'm gonna say edit, delete unused notes. That way we're gonna clean everything that we don't need. We just have this like AI standard, which is the mask, perfect. Let's also change the name, let's call this M mask. We have the fog and just very basic materials, that's perfect. Now we don't need this plane, we don't need all of these lights, right? Um, we don't need this control rig, we just need, uh, we don't even need this guide light, we just need the mask, the volume, and we don't even need the shot cam. Like, because I, I know things are going to look fine. This is the only thing I want to export. Now, I'm going to save the scene as first. I'm going to call this mask fog setup. There we go. And now we're going to open the Japanese tunnel. Let's open this up real quick. There we go. This is where we add with this uh, particular one. And if we do a quick render, if we do look to select it, we do Arnold render, we should get a render of the uh, actual tunnel, right? With the lights and everything. This is a warning that I've been having. Uh, oh, okay, this is actually the, what is this? The displacement on the, on the ground floor, that's fine. I thought it was the box filter. Okay, let's stop this real quick and we'll re-render. And I just want to re-render to get something, uh, to get a, a basic uh, display of what we have right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. So we get an idea of how this thing is looking, right? Um, again, we can um, wait to just a couple of seconds for this to, to throw in the, the denoiser and stuff. And uh, we can save a copy of this image, right? So that we can compare how this looks with the ghost and uh, without the ghost. So I'm going to uh, just wait five more seconds here. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying around. If you're waiting with me, maybe throw in a like or a, a share. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, guys. We do videos every single day. We do videos, we do live streams, we do portfolio reviews, we do giveaways, we do contests. We're a very cool channel, I think.
There we go. So we save this screenshot and now we're going to reference in the mask. So I'm going to say file. We're going to say uh, create reference and we're going to go to our project. Oh, I was actually working on the Lion uh, Guardian project coming very soon, by the way. Let's go to scenes and we got our mask fox setup and we reference. And what that will do, look at that. We got the mask right there. And we got the volume as well. The volume should be right around there. I can't actually see it. There we go. So let's go to frame 40 again, which was the frame that we we're working with. And uh, he actually has a really nice size. So I'm just going to position him there on the middle of the tunnel. Let's panels look to select it. That seems about right, I would say. I might need to push the mask a little bit higher. I might make the mask a little bit bigger just so we can actually see it. And that's fine. The volume I'm going to leave it as is for now. Let's uh, do a file increment and save before anything bad happens, because as you guys know, these things tend to be quite heavy. I'm going to turn off the denoiser and I'm actually going to turn off the um, like all of this guys right here. I'm just going to keep it like this for now. And let's uh, render and see what we get. So technically, when we did the reference, we were referencing in the materials with all the connections. We we're referencing in the volume with the connections to the VDV. And Maya just crashed. <laughs> so yeah, let me open Maya. There we go. So we're back in Maya. I'm, I'm shooting a render here. Let's see if we can actually get it out. And uh, yeah, as you saw there, it's heavy, guys. It's it's a heavy process uh, for the for the machines. But um, and the yeah, let's see if we get it. I think we're going to get it because we've been doing this for 20 seconds and it's not breaking. So remember, the first time you render, the GPU is going to load everything into memory. And in this case, because we're doing GPU, and then it's going to uh, throw in the, the result or the, like the actual result or interpretation. Now, we could change back to CPU. However, that's going to make it even slower. Uh, and sometimes for explosions and stuff like that, it might be a better idea to do it that way, even if it takes longer because it's a little bit more stable. Uh, you don't run out of memory as easily. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to pause real quick, wait a couple seconds here and see if we get the render. There we go. So we did get the render. We're at a minute and 20 seconds of render time, and we can already see a little bit of the of the character right here. I I really like it. I think I think this is looking nice. Um, I do think the smoke looks a little bit too small now. So I'm gonna stop this real quick. And the interesting thing about VDVs is that they're actually objects, so you can scale them. So I'm gonna scale this up a little bit. Make sure that the vase is right there on the ground. And the, again, taking a look at this, the, the density seems a little bit low. Maybe with the scale, we're not going to notice it as much, but the density is looking a little bit low. Let's save real quick. And let's render again. Second time rendering should be a little bit faster. There you go. As you can see right there, it looks a little bit better. looks a little bit bigger. And now the only thing I might need to do is just uh, frame this a little bit better. So I'm just going to move the VDV a little bit to the, to the left, in this case, to, to frame the, the mask very nicely on the center. There we go. Oh, that looks really, really cool. And that's it, guys. That's the way we can integrate a VDV explosion into our render. Now we are very, very close to finishing this guy right here. Um, I do have the, the the light thing over here. I just need to, to bring it in. And I do think I'm going to give the, the railings uh, a pass with texturing. So we probably will do that on the next time we, we come back to this scene. But yeah, like this already looks, I think, quite, quite nice. Look at that. Look at no face right there, looking at us very, very creepily. Uh, one thing we could do is add a little bit of post-production later on inside the Photoshop to make this thing look a little bit creepier. I'm thinking about changing the focal length as well, maybe. Uh, but no, this, this looks quite nice, I think. I think we're in a really, really good position so far. So I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. Remember, this is probably, I think this is the last day of the promo code. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Houdini, how to make your own explosions and your own simulations, make sure to use the code and get that course. It's on our Udemy page or get any of the other courses about our 3D workflow. I'm going to be back tomorrow for one more video and I'm thinking about having a live stream on Saturday. So let me know what you guys think. Maybe we can have like two live streams per week, one on Mondays and one on Saturdays. That's could work. Um, Sundays, as you know, I normally take a, a day of, uh, of rest. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going, guys. Let me know in the comments what else you guys want to see, if there's any other questions, and I'll be happy to address them. Uh, that's it for now, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.